friends, and a special good morning to my Bethel Early Learning Center friends who may be watching at home. Welcome again to my kitchen for cooking with Miss Ronnie. And today we are making chocolate chip cookies. Now we really should call them chocolate chunk cookies because I usually like to use chocolate chunks in my cookies. But this is a very special recipe. I have been making this recipe for chocolate chip cookies since I was in high school. So I have shared this recipe with lots of people and made lots of chocolate chip cookies over the years um, for lots of people to love. And it was actually Miss Lisa, who I love so much, that asked me to make this recipe for all of you today so that she learns how to make it at home. Um, many times when we have staff meetings at school, Miss Ronnie will make these cookies for all the teachers and um, most people seem to really love them, so hopefully you'll make them at home and you'll love them too. Um, I am going to use my mixer today because that just makes things a little bit easier and a little bit faster. But if you um, want to work on your muscles and you have some little friends at home, um, you can also use this um, recipe with a regular old spoon in a regular old bowl and it'll work out just fine. So um, let's go through our ingredients like we usually do and make sure that we have everything that we need because that's the most important part to making anything is that you have all of the ingredients that you need right by your side. So here we go. We have one cup of unsalted butter softened and I have that right here. One cup is two sticks. My sticks are kind of short and tall. You can use long and um, skinny sticks. Um, I do like to use unsalted butter when I'm baking, but if you don't have unsalted butter, unsalted means not salted. Um, if you only have salted butter, you can just leave the salt out of the recipe and that's no problem at all. Um, we have flour, so I have my big flour container right there. Baking powder, we have that right here. Remember, that's what's gonna make our cookies rise. We learned about that last week. Salt, we have our salt right here, and that makes our baked goods nice and tasty. We have regular sugar right here. I use unbleached sugar, but you can use whatever kind of granulated sugar works for you. And I have brown sugar, and I have my brown sugar all measured out right here. Um, one cup or four quarters, so I have one, two, three, four quarters right there. And um, two eggs, I have one egg that I cracked and one that will crack together. Always good to practice cracking eggs. We have our vanilla, which is right here, and I can't help but sniff it again. Oh, so delicious. And then, of course, the most important ingredient are chocolate chips or chocolate chunks, and I have those right here. So, let's get started. And hopefully this isn't going to be too loud. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some things started in my mixer. The wet ingredients, we talked about that last week, wet. And then the dry ingredients will get ready in our bowl. So for right now, let's focus on our mixer. And into our mixer, we're going to put the one cup of butter. And that's two sticks, just like I said. So we're just going to... And um, it's really important, especially if you're not using a mixer, if you're using your spoon, that you leave the butter out so that it gets nice and soft because then it'll cream really well with the sugar. So now we have, let's jump down here, three quarters of a cup of sugar. There's that fraction again, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. So three quarters, so I have my quarter of a cup measuring spoon, so I need three of them. Let's count together. One, two, and three. And if you get a little sugar all over the floor, eh, you can sweep it up. Um, and then we're gonna use our brown sugar. So we have one cup of brown sugar. And like I said, I've already measured that out for you. So, right in the bowl. And then we are just going to get this mixing. Um, and we're, I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Now, in our small bowl, we're going to mix our dry ingredients. 
So, here we go. And I'm going to use my whisk to do it. So let's get out our flour. And here, jump back up to the top. We have three cups of flour. So here we go. And we're going to do one, two, and three. Perfect. We'll put the flour here. Now, three quarters of a teaspoon of baking powder. Now, we're going to learn about fractions, like I said, in a little bit. But here's our baking powder. So we're going to do three quarters. So I have my little quarter teaspoon, and we're going to do three of them. One, two, and three. And then we have also three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. So here's our salt. Again, let's count together. One, two, three. And you might be saying, Miss Ronnie, why would I want to put salt in my chocolate chip cookies? Well, salt is a flavor enhancer. And it just, a little salt makes everything taste better. We don't want to use too much because then it'll be salty. But we want to make sure that we use just enough. So now with our whisk, we're going to just mix all of our dry ingredients. Perfect. And we're going to put that aside. And now I'm going to show you what it looks like inside of our mixer. Here, I can even take it off for you so you can get a close look. And um, now we are going to just, it's called scraping down the sides, just making sure that everything inside of our mixer gets nice and, and mixed together. And now we're gonna add our eggs. So we're gonna put one, and now we'll crack this one together. Remember, we gently, gently, we bang it on the counter till we get a little crack. We stick our fingers inside, our thumbs, and apart we pull. And toss it right in there, no problem. All right, and now we're gonna start mixing that. And while we mix that, I'm just gonna grab my towel. And now we're gonna add in our vanilla. And I think this is really what makes my recipe a little bit different than a lot of others, is it does use more vanilla than you usually use. I'm gonna use two teaspoons, here it is right here, two teaspoons of vanilla. Okay, so let's count that together. And we can do it right while our mixer is mixing. One. And two. All right, excellent. Now, we're gonna start mixing in our dry ingredients. Okay, so here we have our wet ingredients in the bowl. We'll kind of push that in there. Um, we have our wet ingredients in the bowl, and now it's time to mix the dry. So we're not going to pour it all in all at once. We're going to do it in two separate um, additions so that it, it has a chance to mix in. So there we go, and we'll mix that. Now remember, last week when we learned about the baking powder, Baking powder, when it gets wet, that's when it's going to activate and start to make things rise. So that's one of the reasons why we want to mix our dry ingredients separate from our wet, because when we, um, when we have a chance to mix our wet ingredients, um, we, we want to make sure that we do it quickly so that the baking powder has a chance to act. So in it all goes, and there we go. And now you might say, okay, Miss Ronnie, when do we add the chocolate chips? The most important part. Well, that is what we're gonna do right now. So I'm gonna scrape this down. We don't wanna lose any of that chocolate chip cookie dough to the floor, for sure. So now we're gonna take our chocolate chips and we are just gonna dump them in. Now, if all of you weren't watching, I would probably eat a few of these chocolate chips because they're delicious, so why wouldn't I eat them? So if you wanna take a little taste test of your chocolate chips, I won't tell anybody, I promise. And so that is it. That is our chocolate chip cookie dough. 
And I know a lot of people like to buy things at the store because they think it's easy, but as you can see, making chocolate chip cookie dough from scratch at home is a great workout for your arm if you do it by hand. And um, it's also a really, really fun thing to do with your children. So I'm gonna pull that off of the, off of the bowl. Now let's just look through our ingredient list and make sure that we have everything that we were supposed to put in because that's a good check to do. We put in our butter, check. Flour, check. Baking powder, check. Salt, check. Sugar, check. Brown sugar, check. Eggs, check. Vanilla, check. And our chocolate chips. So now we are ready to bake. So I have my cookie sheet. Um, I have my cookie sheet covered with a piece of parchment paper. I use unbleached parchment, parchment paper. Um, just because I don't like to use um, bleach things if I can avoid it, Ble bleach paper products when I'm cooking. Um, but if all you have is bleach parchment, that is no problem at all. Um, you're welcome to use that. Um, alternatively, you can really grease the cookie sheet or um, honestly with these cookies, they have enough butter that you really don't even need to grease it if your cookie sheet is nonstick. So now this is the fun part. You're gonna take your spoon um, and you are going to make a little ball and my friends can help make these balls and you just kind of plop it down on the sheet. So there we go. Just really quickly. We're going to do that together. Now you should know you can make little cookies with a teaspoon. You can make giant cookies with a tablespoon. You can even make this recipe into um, a blondie. Um, if you use a rectangle pan, you can make a cookie cake. And um, I've done that before for people's birthdays. Um, so this recipe is really versatile. Um, these cookies also freeze really well. So you can put them in your freezer if you want to bake cookies and have them for another time. So I've already preheated my oven to 350 degrees before you came. I also washed my hands before you came, of course. Um, I'm gonna stick these in the oven, and then while they're baking, we're gonna talk a little bit about fractions. So let me put these in. Now these need to bake anywhere from 10 to 12 minutes. So we're gonna put the timer on for 10 minutes, and then we can start checking. Um, when they get a little brown around the edge, that's when you wanna take them out. Um, now this is a chewy cookie recipe, so um, if you want them a little bit more well done, of course you can do that. So now let's talk a little bit about fractions, right? What is a fraction? We use them a lot when we're baking, right? Three quarters, um, one half. So let's, let's use our little orange to talk about what fractions are for a minute. And I made some little cards for us. So here I have my orange, and an orange is one whole. So here we go, one whole, okay? Now, a fraction is a part of a whole. So if I take my orange and I cut it right down the middle in half, now my whole orange has two halves. Right? If I put them back together, it's a whole or two halves. So here we go, right? One, two halves. And these two halves together make a whole, just like my orange. Now, if I take this orange again and I cut it another in half, if I cut each half in half, well, now what happens? Now, my whole orange, or my two halves, now I have one, two, three, four quarters, right? One, two, three, four quarters, right? So when we're talking about three quarters of a teaspoon, that means I want three quarters. So it's not quite a whole, but it's more than one half. So let me show you that again. 
We're gonna reconstruct my orange here, right? Let's try this one more time. One hole, right? Here's one hole. Is the same as two halves. One, two. Is the same as one, two, three, four. They're all equal. A fraction is a part of a whole. Now there's fractions all around us in our world, right? When you pour a glass of juice, that glass could be half full, right? Or um, when you have only one cookie left and you need to share it with a friend or a sibling or your mommy or daddy, um, you can cut it in half. So one cookie can make two halves. So I hope that that helps explain a little bit when we're cooking um, and in our world because fractions are super important. Now you might say, hey, Miss Ronnie, what about those cookies? Well, I had a feeling that we weren't gonna be able to wait for my cookies to be ready in the oven. So I made some before you got here. So let me get them for you now. When your cookies come out of the oven, they are gonna be very hot. And you might wanna wait a couple of minutes for them to cool down a little bit. So we take them off of the pan and we put them onto one of these things. It's called a cooling rack. And that lets air get all around so it helps cool down our cookies. And um, this is what the cookies look like when they're done. Like I said, you can choose to bake them a little bit longer. Um, I like them baked a little bit shorter. And um, my brother Bruce, who also um, has had these cookies, he likes them when they're baked a little bit shorter too. So um, anyway, I hope that you enjoy. Let me have a taste. I'm gonna, should I hand one to Mr. Liam, who's watching? All right, I'm handing one to Mr. Liam because these are some of Mr. Liam's favorites. All right, let's take a bite together. All right, Liam's giving me a big thumbs up, and these are delicious. Mm. So, wow, that's really good. Very chocolatey, first thing in the morning. Um, so I hope that you've enjoyed making the cookies with me today. As always, I love when I can be together with you. So I hope you stay tuned. Next week we'll be cooking something new and exciting together. So um, have a wonderful, wonderful day. I miss all of you so much. Mwah. Bye everybody.